Assuring a life of ease and economic security enjoyed by surgeons of his caliber in Europe, Professor Frimpong Huateng finished his postgraduate studies in Germany and returned home to Ghana. Once there, he set about giving back, culminating in the establishment of the country's first cardiothoracic center, still the only one of its kind in the region. Your child, so to speak, has been the cardiothoracic center. Talk to me about its establishment in Ghana, why it was so important, how you made it happen. You know, um, in 1964, Ghana did its first open heart surgery using what we call the surface cooling method without a hard lung machine. Now, the first such operation in the US, I think it was 1952, 54. And Germany did its first open heart surgery with that method in 58. So Ghana was not too far behind the rest of the world, America and Germany. But then in 1966, after the coup d'etat in Ghana, the program was curtailed. And so I saw it as an opportunity to bridge a gap, you know, uh, a 30 year gap. So in 1981, I proposed the establishment of a cardiothoracic center in Ghana. But not many people bought into the idea because they said, well, we have problems with malaria, with guinea worm, with water supply, and basic hygiene. And so, why should a high-tech institution like Kaido Thoracic be established in Ghana? It took me nine years before those in political power accepted the concept. Nine years? Nine years, from 81 to 88, 89, yes. And this is the sacrifice you're talking about exactly. for the diaspora coming back home yes. to develop their skills. Every year I had to come to Ghana twice, once or twice a year to see people, to sell the idea, and go back. And I pay for my own fare, and so on. And how many people would, would, would do that? So after nine years, the concept was accepted. The Germans were prepared to give us loan to buy the equipment, but they were not going to build the center for us. So I took it upon myself to do that, organize funds, and build the block without any contribution from the Ghana government. Why do you make that point? that there was no contribution from the Ghanaian government? I want to make that point uh, because it is, it is important that I could have bought this block as my own somewhere and maybe gotten some money, some loan from Germany to equip it. But I wanted Ghanaians to own it so I could have the opportunity of training more Ghanaians. A private enterprise will not be able to do that. Training people, nurses, technicians, doctors, anesthetists, and so on, surgeons. I wanted Ghanaians to own the center. That is why it's important that we have to sacrifice, you know, for, 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 for Ghana and for Africa. I believe that, you know. So people say, oh, there must be a change in Africa and so on. But I say, like Gandhi said, if you want a change, let that change begin with you. And others will see it and copy. So what were you sacrificing personally? What change were you making within yourself? Change in the sense that when I was coming back from Germany, I did not buy furniture or any equipment for myself. I used my money to buy used equipment. And with that, we started the center until we got money from Germany to buy new equipment. So I sacrificed in terms of knowledge, time, money. That was very important. Cardiothoracic surgery isn't the kind of thing people are familiar with, generally speaking. Talk to me about why it's such an important type of surgery for Africa specifically. You see, the, um, when you talk about cardiothoracic surgery in America, people start thinking about coronary artery disease, which is a disease of affluence. But that's not what we see in Africa. We have heart disease that is related to poverty, heart valve disease, which results from infection, maybe a skin infection, sore throat infection that will spread to involve the heart. And so this is a disease of poverty. And then we have children who are born with heart disease. 1% of children born will have heart disease, and some of them will need surgery. Now, when we talk about cardiothoracic surgery, thoracic surgery 
we're talking about poor children who will swallow coffee soda, what you may call lye, and then burn their esophagus or gullet. And what is this soda for the layman? This is something that poor people in Ghana can buy in the market and they use that to prepare soap. They may not be able to afford the nice soap we have in the supermarket, but they prepare their own soap locally. And when they dissolve it, it looks like water. The children will come home from school and they, they are thirsty, there's no refrigerator, they will see something clear in the bottle, thinking it's water. So they will drink it and burn the gullet. So it's all about poverty. No money for soap, local preparation of soap, and then a child with no refrigeration in the house, seeing this, drinking it, and burning the gullet. So we have to go in, take a piece of the large intestine, and reconstruct a new gullet so the child can swallow again. And Dr. Frimpong Boateng felt he could help his people through more than surgery. He had a message and would choose the route of politics to get his point across.